This here is a kind of cool looking little 99 Volkswagen Golf with a 1.9 liter TDI ALH. Uh, it is a good looking little car for a 99. It's got some fancy wheels on it that make it look, it makes it look real good. And the customer's complaint is the check engine light was on. And let's scan it and see what it needs. So here's the auto scan. It has 17656, start of injection timing regulation P1248. Control deviation. Basically, that means it's a timing problem. So we'll check the timing real quick, and I think there's some other checks we can do real quick to uh, see what's going on there. To check injection timing on VAGCOM, you go into the engine computer. And you go to basic settings group 0 and then down here in the right corner you do TDI timing there it goes and then you gotta select the correct application this is a real early one so it's before 4 of 99 and that timing timing should be between those two lines close to the blue line for customers cars we just get it as close to the blue line as possible unless they have a suggestion based on their own preference but that timing is good here's a quick check you can do for injection timing problems on a TDI uh, the output test the very first test is a test on the timing solenoid that's on the injection pump or timing valve as Volkswagen might call it the uh, when you click start you should hear a tone change in the engine because it goes from uh, timing that's being controlled by the computer to base timing and you should he hear a definite change in tone to the engine and I don't know how well you can hear that but there was no change whatsoever so no reason to go any farther in the output tests now if you don't have VAGCOM there's a second way to see if your timing is working uh, at least partially you can pull the fuse that powers the timing solenoid on the injection pump and listen for the change in the tone of the engine and I'm going to do that for you now on ALH cars it's fuse number 34 now that fuse also powers some other devices so it's going to trigger some trouble codes like solenoid trouble codes and things like that but uh, fuse 34 is one two three, four, the fourth one down in the middle, and we should hear a, a definite clatter change to the tone of the engine. And I did hear a change in the tone of the engine, but it didn't change the timing. I really don't think that's doing anything. By the way, our glow plug light did start flashing. Uh, Maybe I'll hook to another vehicle to show you what the timing sounds like when it changes from controlled timing to base timing. Okay, I wanted to show you a like car. Uh, this is another ALH car. It's not an early one like this one, but it is the same motor, ALH. And I'm going to show you how when you go to basic settings, you can hear a timing change in the motor. It's a red car. I just want there to be no confusion that I'm not doing it on the same car. Uh, this one's a Golf. <clears throat> and this one's a Jetta. With a trunk. Hopefully you can hear the tone of the motor. I am actually have this car parked underneath another one, so <laughs> we are underneath here. And the flicker on the screen is just terrible. My other laptop didn't do that. I don't know whether there's a difference in the screen or whatever but I'll try and buy another one of the exact models of laptop I used to have so, and then we'll do the output test you should hear the same tone change and it turns the N108 on and then turns it off and then turns it on and then turns it off so that you can hear and tell that the timing is working and what's happening is it's control the computer's controlling the timing, then it's going to base timing. Then the computer's controlling the timing, then it's going to base timing. So that's how it should behave. 
you want to learn more about the operation of the injection pump, I feel like I'm pretty confident on injection pumps, but you need to read this. It's a, a Bosch technical instruction for VE style distributor fuel injection pumps. And most of it is talking about how a uh, IDI pump works, but the end has a little section on TDIs, and the TDI is so much simpler than the um, IDI with regards to the injection pump that it only requires a sort section because most of it's the same. As you can see here, this is an IDI injection pump. This is a TDI injection pump. Most of it's the same, and um, but just the control on top and some minor differences obviously they don't really interchange or anything but some minor differences but you need to read this booklet uh, you might be able to find it on the internet as a PDF and download it but study this thing so here's my recommendation on this golf for the trouble code we need to take the injection pump off the car and disassemble it to see if we can find the problem with it and fix it uh, there is some things that I fixed on these before I feel like I'm pretty confident if there's a small part it needs or something like that, I have some core injection pumps I could rob the parts out of and uh, maybe fix it. But if not, it needs an injection pump to fix this. It's already been to another mechanic. The wires were obviously spliced in. He did replace it with another one. It doesn't trigger a circuit-related trouble code, so testing the wires and things like that is, is pointless. So at this point, my recommendation has to be that the problem is inside the injection pump. Hopefully this customer will let us remove it, but for now, for time constraints, we are just going to give it back to him and he's going to continue driving it. And when we get time and he has money, we're going to put, uh, take the injection pump apart. Uh, sending the injection pump off to be rebuilt is definitely an option, but I don't really want to buy a rebuilt injection pump if it just needs the timing part of it repaired. Uh, so if we continue working on this car later. I will do an update video. And if you like this video, give me a like and subscribe at www.kansascitytdi.com.